Welcome to Inside the Broncos Football in the West, season number six. I'm Larry Pulowski, sports director here at Channel 12, and joining me as usual, Jeff Caves, 29 years the host of Idaho Sports Talk on KTIK, The Ticket. 29 years. How, how does that feel? Well, first of all, did I really start out as the host on that deal? You were a host, yeah. You were. We were I just we ran were it from day one. Yeah, oh. we were co-hosts. We did it. You know, it was right. it was a team. It was a team effort. The I, whole hour a week we used to do. Okay, it. I don't know how that worked, but uh, thankfully I'm still gainfully employed there, and uh, we'll see if I'm still employed after our pick segment. Well, speaking of employed, you guys go to great lengths to put on pregame shows. You're headed down mm -hmm. to the Georgia Dome in yep. Atlanta. Huge production down there. What do you guys got going? Well, I'll start broadcasting on, on Wednesday. I'll be at the Omni CNN Hotel doing Idaho Sports Talk. And then Thursday, our coverage will begin at 1 o'clock on 670 KBOI with game day. And then Idaho Sports Talk will originate again from the Georgia Dome area. And uh, then the game's, of course, at 6 o'clock Mountain Time. And then I'll be going from the Georgia Tech Football Stadium on Friday with Idaho Sports Talk and bring back everything from there. Well, this is, uh, as we... You know, get this show off the ground. We're doing it a little bit early as kind of a preview of the season. And next week, because of the Thursday game, we won't have a show on Friday. So don't look for us next Friday. It's just too confusing with everybody traveling down to Atlanta to get this thing on the air. So today we're going to talk about Boise State, what we think of the preseason, fall camp, Coach Harson, the whole nine yards. And then later in the program, we'll get into the Old Miss breakdown and try to make some sense out of an SEC rival. Well, they're not our rival, but they're somebody's rival down there. Should be an interesting show. Pac-12, Mountain West Conference, we'll cover it all. Jeff, let's talk a little bit about the Harson Tour, all the, the prelim stuff that's gone on here. Mm -hmm. Why was that such a priority for Coach Harson as he entered this program? I think he just looked at how it had been run previous, and I don't know that he was critical of it. I think he just knew that Pete was more closed, mm -hmm. and Pete really wanted to focus on other issues. And he knew that there had been people that were never never talked to. And the winning for the program pretty much spoke for itself. When it came to the high school football coaches tour, that had to be done. What's different is they tell you about yeah, what they do exactly. now. That's the difference. Well, it was an interesting situation and, and really opened up a lot of people to the program, which I think is good. So uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about preparation for this fall season right here on Inside the Broncos Football in the West, brought to you by Even Green Technologies, your solar experts. Inside the Broncos Football in the West is brought to you by Even Green Technology, the Treasure Valley Solar Authority, and Steve's Hometown Ford and Steve's Hometown Toyota, 100% committed to your satisfaction. Also by Western Heating and Cooling, turn to the experts, and Leisure Time Spas and Hearth Products. Come see us at Leisure Time. You'll be glad you did. Welcome back to Inside the Broncos Football in the West. Time now to turn our attention to Boise State and the preparation for this brand new 2014 season and a huge kickoff in the Chick-fil-A kickoff classic. That's right. Uh, in the uh, Georgia Dome in Atlanta. But to get to that point, there's a lot of preparation that's been done already. Right. Jeff, as you look at, and I, uh, well, I guess they look at, nobody's really looked at it because the press has pretty much been cut out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of whining out of some of the guys from the Idaho State's been about not being able to get into practice to see what's going on. Obviously, Harson's changing something. Yeah, right now, I think the offense is really the thing that they want to shield. I don't think they want to show it to anybody. Of course, everybody saw the scrimmage, but that was pretty dumbed down. Yeah. So it just, I think, is as much about the external, you know, cloak of mystery that you don't want Ole Miss to know what you're going to do because you only have this chance once. You might as well use it. Pete's doing the same thing at Washington. He's not telling anybody who his quarterback is, and I'm sure he's not giving many people looks at what he's doing. So I think it's pretty common today. Well, you know, if you think about it from the Ole Miss perspective, 
what are they looking at? Are they going back to 2010 films, you know, of, of Kellen Moore and the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl? Uh, what do you think they're doing for their prep work? Because they're not going to see what they saw last year. Well, Coach Freeze has talked about that. He said they did go back and they did look at that. They did look at or uh, Arkansas State. If they're really bored, they can go look at Texas. Well, different personnel groups there at Texas. And I, and I think they've studied what last year Boise State did because that personnel group, for the most part, is coming back. That's the big mystery is how are they going to make this all work? There's been discussion that shifts and motions are coming back. Well, you, you've got to have the personnel to execute that, and it, it really starts with the offensive lineman. I was listening to uh, Paul Jay on the KBLI Morning Show this morning, and he was talking about the second leading passer returning from last year. Who is it? Miller. Oh, Matt Miller. Wow. <laughs> Matt Miller's completed Half -back one pass. pass. Yeah. That's more than any <laughs> other quarterback on the Boise State roster. And Paul Jay was funny because he said, Grant Hedrick, stay healthy. Yeah. But he does need to stay healthy. Yes. And he needs to produce. Yeah, and I think Boise State's quarterback situation is its not funny, but it may only be as good as Finley, the backup, is. True. Because you, you can't let Grant just totally uh, run crazy. Uh, Dan Hawkins told me, you know, 10 to 12 carries a game is a lot. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of hits to give your quarterback. That zone read option we were all saying last year, why didn't Joe Southwick keep the ball and run more? The, you know, Grant can, but do you want him? Especially when you look at Finley. And the more you let Grant do, tells me, the more Finley has progressed and they're willing to expose him because they're confident in what they have behind him. Well, one position that was sorely underused last year was the tight end position. And as you look at this tight end group, boy, there are a bunch of names that we really don't know too much about, Jeff. Your thoughts on incorporating the tight end back into this offense again? You know, it's kind of like putting us in a beauty contest. <laughs> you could do it, but it's like <laughs> What's putting a bow tie on a pig. I mean, why would you do that? So if the tight ends can, can contribute, if Connor Peters can block on the edge, if Dahens can be the all-around guy, if Jake Rowe can catch the ball in the slot, and expose uh, linebackers in one-on-one -on -one coverage, then let's do it. But if you don't have that talent, I think you go with other pieces and parts, and that's what they did last year. All right, well, we've got a lot of different things to cover today, and when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about the Mountain West Conference and what we see are some of the key games next weekend right here on Inside the Broncos, Football in the West. Welcome back to Inside Broncos Football in the West, brought to you by Even Green Technologies, your solar experts. Let's talk about Mountain West Conference now, Jeff. Um, really, we could interchange this with the Pac-12 this week because it seems like so many Mountain West teams are playing yeah. Pac-12 schools. The Colorado State-Colorado game that will be played in the big in Mile High Stadium in Denver intrigues me because that's Boise State's next opponent, obviously, after Ole Miss. But Colorado and Colorado State on a neutral site why is it that they do it that way? Well, they thought they made more money that way, okay. but they're rethinking that because the ticket sales are a little bit down. You know, Colorado hasn't had a winning season since 2005. So Good. Colorado State wow. really should win this football That's game. That's hard to believe, isn't it? It is, and although they're not, they're not favored Colorado State, but they've got the better quarterback in Grayson. Everybody knows they've got to replace Bibbs. They yeah. think they have a kid in Odin who, when they asked Odin about replacing Bibbs, he said, I'm better than him. <laughs> and it was his old roommate. Well, so at least it'd be fun to watch bold statement. how he produced. <laughs> Dibs is a 30 touchdown guy. Yeah, that's true. You know, and he's still hanging out in the NFL. So it'd be fun to see what happens there. All right. Well, let's turn our attention to the Washington Huskies. They're traveling over to the islands to take on the University of Hawaii. And what a mess the University of Hawaii is right now. Yeah, it's, it's distracting. And uh, Norm Chow knows it. They uh, had trouble with where to feed their kids. They had trouble paying their kids their scholarship checks. What? They had trouble with where they were going to sleep. <laughs> they had trouble paying their scholarship checks? They did. Oh, they were laid on them, goodness. and kids had to sleep in the locker room. And that's all off the field stuff. But their recruitings went down. It, it's really difficult. They, Washington will sleepwalk through this game. Perfect opener. You look at the first three or four games for Washington with Coach Pete, they can sleepwalk through that schedule. Which is kind of interesting after the comment he made about not wanting down the road to play those group of five teams, but that's a whole other conversation. Uh, Fresno State uh, taking on the Trojans of USC. Boy, you talk about biting off a tough one after losing, you know, uh, the car kid. Uh, Derek Carr is now in the pros, hanging out pretty good with Oakland. Then they got to go back into it into L.A. and play the Trojans. Yeah, same thing happened to Boise State, remember, in the Las Vegas Bowl in 12. They beat Washington, came back and opened up with Washington yeah. on the road. 
Fresno got beat by 25 by USC with Devontae Adams, who is a high caliber uh, wide receiver, and of course Carr. Now they don't have either of those guys, and they're going to the Coliseum. And SC's loaded on defense. Uh, it could get uglier than 25. Well, Jeff, I know you're a, a, a longtime watcher of the USC program. What is Sarkeesian going to do with that program? Is he going to make an impact, or is he going to make a depact? Well, he has to live up to the Pete Carroll era. That's really what everybody compares where USC's at. Give him one more recruiting class because they're still really low in scholarships. They're below 70 scholarship guys. So if they get injuries at the wrong position groups, they're really in trouble once again because of that 30 scholarship loss they're just coming off of. And I, That's a deep cut. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if people really understand what that could do to a program, but 30 scholarships. Yeah. I mean, Boise State was crying about the three that they lost yeah. for three years. They I don't think that'll ever happen again. With the new system now, with how the Power Five are going to govern themselves, they won't be penalizing themselves like that. I don't right. think that'll happen. All right, very good. Well, there's our uh, Mountain West Roundup for this week. When we come back, we're going to the board. We're going to make some picks, and you know how that works out. If you've ever watched this show before, we are the experts, or maybe not. We'll be back inside the Broncos Football in the West. Well, we turn our attention to the good humor segment of our show, and that doesn't involve ice cream, but maybe as you look at us, it could. Let's take a look at last year. Let's go to the tail of the tape, and let's see how the two experts did last year. Well, Jeff, you made a heck of a comeback. The unknown, what we call him? Unknown the unknown handicapper. handicapper. He had a heck of a run. Where's his stats? He made a comeback, and I, yeah. I barely squeaked out a winning record, but that's nothing to write home about. If you take that to Vegas, they'll throw you out of Vegas. So <laughs> we're going to try again. Jeff, right. what do you have on the docket for us this week? Well, let's go to game number one. And, uh, you know, Penn State's still coming back as, as Southern Cal is, and this is the second youngest team in the country. I like UCF, who could be the non-Power 5, you oh, know, yeah. pick six New Year's Day bowl team. This could be your BCS buster. I'm going to take UCF. All right, very good. And second on the docket for you, you're going with Miami and points. Yeah, Louisville has lost their coach. I think they're going to have to retool with Petrino. He's in there browbeating the way he does things. And Miami's got a lot more talent back, so I'm going to take the Canes here and take those points. All right, well, let's see what I've got on the docket here. First of all, you know, I look at uh, Carolina, South Carolina. Uh, 11 points is all they got to give up at home against Texas A&M without Johnny Football. I'm taking the Gamecocks this week. Hard to argue with that until they prove themselves a quarterback. Exactly. And I hate to beat on the Vandals, but they have got to go into Florida, into the Gators pit. Hot, humid, early game, first game of the year. 35 points? I don't think it's enough. Healthiest Florida's been in two years, probably. I I'm going to take Florida right on that one. And then Boise State, Ole Miss, Jeff, you're going to take the points and, and go with it. It's just too many points for me until Boise State tells me that, you know, they can't score. I'm going to say I'll take the 10 and think they can at least score 21 points. And everyone's been telling me how great Ole Miss is and they're ranked 18th, they're ranked 19th, but yet Vegas says it's only a 10-point spread. I'll take the points too and we'll go with that. Those are our picks for the week. Do with them as you please. We'll be back with the Pac-12 Roundup right here on Inside the Broncos Football in the West. Let's turn our attention now to the Pac-12 Conference and a game that interests me, Rutgers, a new Big Ten entry yeah. uh, into the equation at Washington State. Mike Leach should have things geared up by now, don't you suspect, on the police? Sure he does. got a great quarterback, Connor Halliday, who is uh, the son of Dwayne Halliday, a former Boise State quarterback. Uh, I look at Rutgers and think, okay, they got a great defensive line, so they could get some pressure on him, but that's about it. I think they'll be confused. That's a great game for Washington State, I think. And a long trip from New Jersey uh, out to the Palouse. And you know it's never easy to get into Pullman. I mean, it's uh, one of those places that's just hard to get to. So uh, I think Mike Leach uh, have something dialed up for him there. UNLV, an up-and-coming team in the Mountain West, at least that's what I keep hearing. Right. And they have had a better record, and they've uh, done a little better job down there with Bobby Houck. But uh, taking on Arizona, Rich Rodriguez has got that program oiled up and running smooth. Yeah, and he's got to replace Kerry at running back, which is a challenge, and, and UNLV's got to replace their quarterback and running back. 
I think there's enough to cover because I like the intangibles that he's brought to this football team. Their belief, got a great wide receiver. I think they can cover. There's no way I think they'll win. And, you know, Rodriguez has brought a little bit of an attitude and some swagger back to that Arizona program that they haven't had for a while. So I, I, I think you're right on that one. UCLA has to get on the big bird and fly all the way to the University of Virginia, who was a really uh, surprised team last year and how well they played. I think UCLA is too good, Poe. I know you follow them close. They, they waxed Virginia Tech in that bowl game, and Virginia Tech beat, beat Virginia last year. So I, I, I'm connecting those dots. A lot on the table for UCLA, all kinds of talent, and a great quarterback. I love the Bruins. Well, and Jim Mora Jr. has done a heck of a job there. And if yeah. you look at the positions, offensively at least, defense, I know they're good, but they're, they're stacked. Every position on that offense is just loaded. They have got no weaknesses that I can see at this point in time, and we haven't played a game yet. But they really don't have a lot of weakness there. So um, I think that the uh, UCLA, even having to travel, is not going to be a big deal. No, I look at that and think, okay, you know, Virginia, <clears throat> can you defend a quarterback as good as Hundley, who when he sees an opportunity and the pass game isn't there, he will tuck it and he will take a 10-yard gain and turn it into 50. He is that good when he cuts loose. Okay, give me a one line on your thoughts on Chris Peterson's first year at Washington. Nine wins. Nine wins. Nine wins. That's it. Yeah, I, I got to see his quarterback play. All you know, right. the Pac-12 has got great quarterbacks. He has to have a quarterback play great. So does 9-3 and three buy you any credibility in the Pac-12? I think so. Looking at what Sarkeesian didn't get done, uh, I think he's up there. And he has to have a great recruiting class coming up. He knows that. That's where they need help is the next class. All right. Well, when we come back, it's time to get into Ole Miss and Boise State right here on Inside the Broncos Football in the West, brought to you by Even Green Technologies. Welcome back to Inside the Broncos Football in the West. Well, Six days from now, you'll be sitting in the Georgia Dome, yes. uh, sipping on an iced tea or an Plush club Palmer, seats. Oh, yeah. plush seats, oh, press yeah. box food, oh, yeah. you know, the whole nine yards. Right. right. But will Boise State show up? Sure, I think. They're going to show up. We know they're going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> they got to bring out the new Okay, elements. that's not exactly what I mean. Yeah, I know. I think they'll, they'll, they'll catch Ole Miss by surprise in the first quarter. That's going to be a real feeling out here. What are they doing and how and why? Yeah. And it'll be really interesting to see the personnel packages that Sanford throws out there and throws at Ole Miss. Were you surprised at the uh, spread? Ten points. I, I still, we, we both picked Boise State. We both took the points in our pick segment. But everything I hear... Mississippi's got this, Mississippi's got that, Mississippi's got this. Third in the SEC overall being picked. Um, how can a spread with a team that was 8-5 and five last year, although so is Ole Miss, I just don't get it. I don't understand that mentality. So is it strictly a gambling issue that we're dealing with? I think so. I think it's a, it's a nice teaser. You know, you're giving Boise State 10 here, giving Boise State 10 points, and most of the gamblers' memory is at Virginia Tech. It's at Georgia. Georgia. You know, that's their, that's their memory. Of course, they're forgetting Michigan State. They're forgetting <laughs> last year against Washington, which we shouldn't because the Washington game was 17 to six with I think a minute to go in the third. Washington then scored again, but they were only down by 11 for the majority of that game. Yeah. They did get blown out eventually, where it fell apart on them. But gamblers' memories are short. Well, Ole Miss brings Bo Wallace to the table as their quarterback. Um, senior, a lot of experience, the most experienced quarterback in the SEC, a guy that has had pretty good success, but he's not a world beater. I don't think anybody's talking him as being the next, uh, you know, Johnny, Johnny Manziel, football, well, that's just not how he plays. a number one draft pick, a first round draft pick even. I haven't heard that kind of buzz, but as you've done your research, what do you feel with as long as, as long as Wallace takes care of the football, the, you know, I think they're very confident that they have other things that they can do around them. So as long as he does not turn the football over, I think Ole Miss feels they're in great shape in this football game. They're in great shape. Just don't – and I think Boise State's the same way. The turnovers will kill you in these early games. Oh, absolutely. Give them extra chances, short fields, and all of a sudden it gets to be a blowout sometimes. And, and Walsh just has to take care of the ball, which he's done well against some of the weaker opponents. Southeast Missouri last year, they did have two fumbles and an interception. So it can fall apart on him, and that's what PSU needs. So that begs the question then, Jeff, if it is on Bo Wallace to not create those turnovers, what is Marcel Yates 
done with that defensive backfield because he's he's got this moniker now. He's the guru of defensive backs. He put a lot of those kids from Boise State into the pros. He got the Dylan uh, Sumner Gardner kid to come here. Sure. Uh, when he was committed to Texas A&M, changed his commitment because of Marcel Yates. Has he turned the tide? Well, you know, he's a recruiter, you know, and kids love him. So that is going to work always. He's a great person to be around. But defensively speaking, where this game will be won and lost for Boise State, they must not get pounded between the tackles. Okay. If Ole Miss continually runs a zone read option and just pounds Boise State up front, they will go outside much easier. They'll be able to play action pass and throw off that much easier, and it'll put BSU on their heels, which is not where they want to be. They must show up stoutly in that first quarter, take that run game away, and force Wallace to beat them through the air, and then let these exotic blitz packages come from the blind side. Let DSG get in there and run some safety blitz, and then we'll see what, uh, what Marcel can bring to the table. All right, well, let's flip the uh, offensive side of the ball here now over to Boise State's side. Man, oh man, oh man, everything you hear, everybody's talking, O-line, 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 Grant, Grant Hedder, Grant Hedder, Grant Hedder, those are the two components. What about this O-line? Well, they've got a tough task. The defensive line from Ole Miss, when healthy, is amongst the top three in the, in the SEC, maybe the country. So their pass rush still last year, because of injuries, was not that great. It'll depend to me on down and distance. What can you do first and 10? Can you give me a second and five, or are you going to put me in a second and 15? If Boise State gets in those bad down and distance odds where your odds are converting third and 15, third and 10, go down to 30% or so. I don't like those situations. What do you think of Robert Nemdichi? Big defensive lineman, 6'4", 280 pounder. Oh, he's pounder. a first round draft pick in the NFL. You're looking at a first round pick in the NFL. Wow. So that kid is the man. They're going to have to maybe, you know, at least chip on him when he's out. They're going to have to make a guard center combination on him. And then there's other quick guys up front. There's a lot, a lot of landmines in, in Boise State. The whole old line's been reconfigured. Everybody's playing different positions. All right. Well, it's going to be a few more days before we get to actually see that game happen. And Jeff is going to be down there, 670 KBOI, yes. with a huge production and a five-hour pregame show? Yes. Well, we'll start Wednesday on, on Idaho Sports Talk on 93.1 The Ticket. We'll start from 3 to 6 at the Omni CNN Hotel. Thursday, we'll be on 1 o'clock on 670 KBOI, and then at 3 o'clock on KTIK. And then Friday, I'll do the, the ticket show from the Georgia Tech football stadium. So I'll be down there for three days. I may come back five pounds out here. All right, very good. Well, we'll keep our eyes peeled for that. You're watching Inside the Broncos, Football in the West. Remember, two weeks from today will be our next show. September 5th, we'll break down the Colorado State game. Thanks to our title sponsor, Even Green Technologies, your solar expert, and to Steve's hometown motor over in Ontario and Payette. Well, thanks for watching. We'll be back in two weeks right here on Inside the Broncos, Football in the West. Thanks for watching. Inside the Broncos, Football in the West is brought to you by Even Green Technology, the Treasure Valley Solar Authority, and Steve's Hometown Ford and Steve's Hometown Toyota, 100% committed to your satisfaction. Also by Western Heating and Cooling, Turn to the Experts, and Leisure Time Spas and Hearth Products. Come see us at Leisure Time. You'll be glad you did.